Well, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, turn with me in the book of Exodus, chapter 20. Exodus, chapter 20. We're going to be reading verses 8 through 11. Exodus 20, 8 through 11. Scripture says this. says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son nor your daughter nor your male servant nor your female servant nor your cattle nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the blessed name of Jesus, the only name that is able to save, and the only name in which we come into this spiritual realm, Father God, and by which we have authority in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Father, and we ask God today your anointing be upon us as we speak the word, as we hear the word, and I pray we receive the word today. Thank you, Father, for your love and your mercy. It endures forever. God, help us today to be more like you, to want to be more like you, to have a desire in our hearts to be like you. Bless the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. How do you handle a different point of view? It's hard, isn't it? It really is. It's difficult to handle a different point of view. And I'm not asking you today to... I'm not, I'm not asking you today, like when you, for instance, talk to someone maybe of a different type of a denomination, um, or maybe of a different, not necessarily talking about different religions, but just someone that you, maybe you have in your family that has a different point of view of the Scriptures. And they're not wrong in the sense that they're not saved, but they have a different point of view. And maybe you might hear, I'll give it to you this way, maybe you hear a new Christian way of singing songs. You know? We, we have the old traditional hymns that we all love, and and, uh, and don't get me wrong, they're awesome, and I love singing them. They have meat to them. They have, they're, just, they're awesome. But, you know, then the wall music came. We came in the era in the 90s, the wall music came, and if you didn't have an overhead projector, and then you didn't get a color projector like they have now, you are just in the ancient past. Well, the people that are stuck back there in that ancient past will not receive any kind of wall music whatsoever. They believe it's wrong. They believe it's sin. They believe in... But what they have to understand is this. Before the hymnals came out, there was no acceptance of hymnals when they first came out. It's just the same thing. Back then, there was the purists who believed you only sang the songs, and that was it. You didn't have any other writings of, of Christian music. You didn't accept it. And so, what, and then, then you got guys come by like Martin Luther, and he, he's saying, Mighty Fortress is our God. But the tune was after a bar tune. And I'm like, No, 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 that's sin. But today, that's one of our traditional, awesome songs we sing. That's a, that's a heavenly song if I ever heard it. But back then, it wasn't accepted. And so, what we have to understand is this there's sometimes God's going to bring people into your life that's going to have a different point of view, there's different things to be said. And it's not necessarily I'm asking you at all to say have an open mind about all, like I said, well, I go about all religions, because that's not what I'm saying. But I, this morning, just heard on the radio a, a, a pastor from a different denomination, and the stuff he said, I didn't totally agree with, but there were some things in it that he said, I thought, that's something to think about. And I believe we must be open to the Word of God, because God's not in our little box. Yeah. Amen? He's not here. The Rock Community Church cannot contain God. Do you understand right. what I'm saying? Amen. God's presence is here when we welcome Him in. Yes. But the Rock Community Church cannot contain God, and we cannot just exclusively say that you're going to find God only at the Rock Community Church. Right. Amen? Amen? But there are many people who believe that. Right. And other denominations and other churches, they believe the only place you're going to find God is at their church. And you can't say any different because that they're not open to any, any other style, any other way. And so, I'm just asking you this morning, if we just listen, because I'm not going to dabble, okay, if you will, but I'm going to say some things that you're going to like, man, that hurts. That's going to step on my toes. I, you know, I've never heard it like that before. Um, those kind of things, okay? 
So I'm just asking that you be open and listen to the Word of God. I'm not going to bring you another religion, okay? But I'll be honest with you, I never preached on the fourth commandment like the way I believe the Lord gave it to me today, okay? So just buckle in, because I have a lot of scripture. Buckle in, get ready. And uh, we got done a little earlier with our praise and worship, so that gives me a little more time, amen? <laughs> all right, no, I'm just kidding. I won't keep you here all day. But anyway. The title of this message today is Jesus Use Me. Jesus Use Me. On the fourth commandment, this has a message deal, but I believe in it, this commandment of Sabbath rest also has within it a commandment of six days of work. You see, we only want to focus on the Sabbath rest when we see that, but you have to understand also there says here, a man will work six days and rest on seven. I mean, sometimes we pass that up. I believe within the fourth commandment is an institution of rest on the seventh day, but it also has the institution of work. I believe within it has to deal with several things, and I believe it has an answer to a lot of issues in our lives today if we'll just listen. The work. Shannon, I don't even want to talk about rest. I don't even want to talk about play. I want to talk about fun. But I believe there is healing. I believe there's even worship and work. So, I want to talk about our society for a few minutes. And I don't need to tell a lot of you things, but you know there's some things that just I've experienced, and I'm about 10 years behind a lot of people when it comes to the media, and it comes to the, not media as a television, but media, like multimedia type stuff, and all this Facebooking and all this stuff. I'm way behind the times on this. I'm not up with that in a sense. Maybe I'm rebelling in a way. Maybe I'm not open to that new way of bringing it out, but I'm just not up on that. But this society we live in, I believe, We've been raised up. I think our priorities are a little messed up. Amen. And I'm not using this for my opinion's sake. I'm just using this. I believe that we do have our priorities messed up in our society here in the United States of America. We have a lot of luxuries. We have things that people have never before had. We are amongst the most wealthiest people in the world. And some of you are like, well, Shannon, you don't know who you're talking about. I sure don't have anything. Well, if you have a car, if you have a house, and you're fortunate enough to have a garage, you're in the top about 10 to 15 percent richest people in the world. I don't know if you realize that or not. We're very blessed. But yet we don't have enough. You ever thought about that? And I said that loud for a reason, it's to get your attention. You sure got it, Shannon. I don't like that. But anyway. We have all the luxuries the world has to offer. Almost kind of like this Babylon we're going to read about in the book of Revelation. It almost seems that way. I'm not saying it is, but it almost seems that way. But yet, we're still not satisfied. We're amongst the most depressed people on the planet. We're the most suicidal people on the planet. We're the most ungrateful people on the planet. We're amongst the most unholy people on the planet. It would almost seem like these luxuries aren't doing us as good as we thought they would. Now, Pastor, your dad's on me now. You're going to talk. You're going to start sounding like an old-time pastor that said you can't have a TV and you can't have a house. You can't have that. You just need to be a tent blower. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying anything. You all know. I've told you before. I have computers. I have internet. I have TV. So I'm not being hypocritical and telling you not to have it. But I'm asking you this. Do they have you? How much of this world has you? Well, Shannon, sure didn't sound like anything at the fourth commandment. Then where's this coming from? Stick with me. A different point of view. Open your heart and your mind and listen. People today, impatient, ungrateful, God-haters, it almost seems like we're in the last days. Amen. I'm not a prophet. I'm 
I'm not declaring. I'm just saying, in my personal observation, it almost seems like we're in the last days. In the book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 4, it says, But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Now, there's two ways we can look at this knowledge increasing. We can look at it and say, we have all this technology. That's what surely must what Daniel was talking about. No. It wasn't what he was talking about. This is not what the angel told him what it meant. Oh, Shannon, man, that's what I, 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 I don't agree with that. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to agree with me if you don't want to. That's fine. But the knowledge that is increasing here is the knowledge of more and more prophetic events coming to pass. Amen. We're seeing things in this world today that the world has not seen before. We're seeing things come to pass and take place that we never thought we would ever see in the prophets that foretold. Now, what are these? Well, I wish I could have some, about another hour or two to sit down with you and talk about the prophetic events that has taken place already and things that are lining up right now in perfect Perfect alignment. What the Word of God says is going to happen. It's happening right now. The end of days, we would recognize more and more and more that we are in the last days. Now, I know preachers have been saying this for 50 years, but the preachers 50 years ago that were saying that, they recognized something, but they wasn't observing today what we see. They wasn't observing all the prophetic events that's happened. And so Paul writes this to Timothy. And this is how one of the things we'll know and have at least some points he makes in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. He makes this point what he is, what has been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers. Now listen to this. If you don't have your Bible, listen to it. For men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Unthankful, unholy, unloving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. Paul says this is how we will know that we are in the last days. You will see these things take place. And we are.